Let us now talk about an iterative solution to compute power of a number. The idea of this iterative solution is different from recursive solution. And this solution is also going to take log n time if we are computing x to the power n. And also this solution is going to require big O of one auxiliary space. The idea of the solution is based on these facts. The first fact is every number can be written as sum of powers of 2. For example, you can write 10 as 8 plus 2. 8 and 2 both are powers of 2. You can write 19 as 16 plus 2 plus 1, right? We, we, all these three are powers of 2. And it relates to binary representation of a number, right? If you write the binary representation of number 19, you will get 1, double, 0, 1, 1. So this bit corresponds to 16, this bit corresponds to 2, and this bit corresponds to 1. Similarly, 10 can be written as 1010, 0, 1, 0. this bit corresponds to 8, and this bit corresponds to 2. So this is one fact. The other fact is we can traverse through all the bits of a number starting from least significant bit to the most significant bit in big O of log n time, right? Because binary representation has log n bits and you can write a loop like this and this loop is going to give you all the bits of a number starting from LSB to MSB. You can simply uh, run a loop while n is greater than zero and if n% percent 2 is not equal to 0, it means the last set bit of the current value of n is 1, right? You can write your logic for 1 bit here. Otherwise, the bit is 0. You can write the 0 bit logic here. And then you can do n equal to n by 2. So if you run this loop for n equal to 10, what will happen? You will get 0 first, right? Because the remainder is 0. You will come into the else part. And then you will reduce 10 to 5. Then you will come to the if part in the next iteration, right? because n has reduced to 5. Now after coming to the else part, you will make n equal to n by 2 again. So you will make n equal to 2. And next time you will come into the 0 part, right? And then you will make n equal to 1 and you will come to the 1 part. So this way you can generate all bits of a number from LSB to MSB, right? And this is just a log and loop. So what we do here is we want to compute x raised to the power n, right? X is X and I and R our input numbers. So we traverse through all the bits of number N, right? And for every bit that you traverse, you consider it as a multiplier of corresponding power of 3. This is a multiplier of 3 raised to power 1. This is multiplier of 3 raised to power 2, multiplier of 3 raised to power 4, the multiplier of 3 raised to power 8. So when you see a zero bit, you ignore it. When you see a 1 bit, you multiply it by 3 raised to the power, you, you initialize your result as 1, right? And you multiply your result by 3 raised to the power 2. When you see a 0 bit, you ignore it. When you see a 1, you multiply it by 3 raised to the power 8, right? And how do you get these powers? In every iteration, you can simply do x equal to x into x, right? Because every iteration, x is getting, uh, getting power, right? Getting squared. It is initially 3, then 3 square, then 3, 4, then 3, 8. Sometimes you ignore the power, sometimes you don't, right? When you see a 1, you don't ignore, you multiply it with the result. So this is the basic idea. Inside this loop, we are going to do x equal to x into x. If you want to compute x to the power n. And here, we are going to write some logic so that we update the result, right? So now you have enough idea. Please pause this video and try to write down the complete function to compute the power. This function takes two parameters, x and n, uses this logic. The logic is traverse through all the bits in binary representation from LSB to MSB, multiply the number 3 raised to the power that number if x is 3 with the corresponding bit position if the bit is 1. If bit is 0, then ignore it, right? And after all the multiplications, you will have the correct result. For example, you will be multiplying 3 raised to the power 2 and 3 raised to the power 8 with 1 and you will have the correct result. In case of this number, you will be multiplying 3 raised to the power 1, 3 raised to the power 2 and then 3 raised to the power 4 and you will get the correct result. And you will use some, some sort of the structure of the code. So please pause this video and write the complete code. Here is our complete implementation. And if you take a closer look at this implementation, we are initializing the result as 1. And we are traversing through all the bits of n's binary representation. We run a loop while n is greater than 0. And inside the loop, we do n equal to n by 2. And then we check current bit. If current bit is 1, right? If it's not 0, it means it's 1. 
then what are we going to do? We are going to multiply result with x, right? And in every iteration, we are going to do x in x equal to x square, right? Let's do a dry run, right? And let's get the idea first. Say we want to compute 4 raised to the power 5. So we consider the binary representation of 5, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. So what are we going to do? We are going to compute the result as 4 raised to the power 4 multiplied by 4 raised to the power 1. So this is going to be our result, right? So what are we doing, doing here? We are initializing our result as 1. In the first iteration, we are having n equal to 5. So n is odd, so we'll go inside this condition, right? Last bit is 1, right? That's, that's what you are going to access in the first iteration, the last bit. Your iteration is going to happen from LSB to MSB. So it's 1, so you are going to multiply your result with x. So your result is going to become 4, and then you are going to do x, x equal to x square. So x is going to become 16. And then you do n equal to n by 2, so n becomes 2. Now begins your second iteration. In the second iteration, n is 2, which is an even number. So you are not going to go inside this if condition. Your result is going to remain as it is. You are going to do x equal to x square. So x is now going to become 16 into 16, which is 256, right? And you can notice that x is now 4 raised to the power 4. So after that, we do n equal to n by 2, n becomes 1. Now begin our third iteration. Inside this third iteration, we check for this condition. This condition is true this time. So we are going to have our result as 4 into 256, which is 1024. And we are going to do x equal to x square. So x is going to become this. Though although this value does not matter because we are not going to have any more iterations. Why? Because n now becomes 0. Since n becomes 0, we come out of the loop and we return our result, which is 1024, which is 4 raised to the power 5. Let's quickly talk about time complexity. Time complexity is clearly log n because we are traversing through binary representation of number n. So this loop is going to be simply log n. Uh, another reason is you are doing n equal to n by 2. So when you have such a loop, you always have log n time complexity. And auxiliary space is big O of 1. So this is better than recursive solution. And in fact, we can further optimize it by using bitwise operators. See, this expression can be rewritten as n and 1. Right? If you're programming in C++, you can simply write n and 1. And this simple expression using bitwise operators is used to check whether n is odd or not. Right? The value of this number is going to be non-zero only when n is odd. Right? Because we are doing bitwise and with a number whose last bit is 1. Right? So this uh, can be uh, optimized slightly by using bitwise operator. And this can also be optimized slightly. You can use shift operator here. This can be done in both C++ and Java. So you can do n equal to n right shift 1, which means you are dividing n by 2, right? This means you are dividing n by 2 to the power 1, right? So this gives you the same effect and this is faster because it's a bitwise operator. See, uh, this particular expression cannot be used in Java, obviously, because Java allows only binary values to be used in a condition, right? It can only be optimized or used in C++. So this is even better implementation. And this is an interesting solution. We have log n time complexity and big O of 1 auxiliary space. Also in such questions, your value of power may go really high, may go beyond integer limits. So you can use long, long for the numbers and you can store your result in long long in C++ and long in Java. Also, we can use modular arithmetic for multiplications if our result is expected under some modulo. We can replace this with some modulo m where m is a parameter to us, right? Int m is a parameter and this way we can avoid overflows if user asks us to handle large values and give us the result under modulo m. So we can do this computation under module M. This computation can also be done under module M, right? This way we handle large numbers under a modulo of a number M.